You welcome back to the morning show here on Arise News. Nobel laureate Professor Wale Shoyinka has challenged the vice presidential candidate of Labour Party, Dati Baba Ahmed, to a public debate. Following the criticism trailing his condemnation of Baba Ahmed's recent denouncement of President elect Bola Tinubu, the judiciary, and Nigeria's democracy. Shoyinka, in the piece yesterday titled Fascism on Course, also addressed the, the censures he is receiving from obedience. The supporters of Peter Obi, Liberal Party's presidential candidate, declaring that the seeds of fascism in the political arena have evidently matured. Baba Ahmed had, in an interview, stressed that whoever swears in Mr. Tinubu as president ascended democracy in Nigeria. Last Wednesday, Shrinka had denounced what he called the menacing utterances of the vice presidential aspirant as unbecoming, adding it was a gladiatorial challenge directed at the judiciary and by implication the rest of the democratic polity. Chris Nwokobia is convener, country first movement and spokesperson of the Obidati presidential campaign organization. He joins us at this point to respond to some of those issues, those imagined issues, including this week's purported suspension of Julius Habre as national chairman of Labour Party and his replacement with one Lamidi Apapa. Good morning, Chris. Still, it's my pleasure to be here. Good to here. have you in the morning. studio. I mean, we've only been speaking with you here <laughs> from <Abuja. laughs> digitally. Hi, but good pleasure. to have you in the studio. My pleasure is mine. All right. Yeah. There are issues with the Labour Party. Uh, it looks like the, uh, you guys are under siege. Mm. And there are two main issues. I, I don't know which one you would like to start with. But of course, it's the issue on the one hand of uh, what is looking like um, a turmoil within the Labour Party. Uh, Julia Sabiri, because of a certain court order, uh, has been asked to, has been removed, you know, as a chairman. And we have uh, Lamidia Papa there, you know, saying that um, uh, uh, he's now the acting chairman, you know, on the strength of the court order. There's also the issue of, you know, you're dealing with Professor Wally Shrinka on the one hand, you're dealing with Lai Mohamed and the federal government on the other hand. Is this about the fact that you have gone to court or that you are saying things? that some of your members are not expected to say? Still, clearly, it's about the jambalaya of issues. I, when I discuss these issues about um, the events of the past one week, I, I laugh, mm. you know, for two reasons. The, the first is that, uh, you remember that praxis, the witch cried last night, mm -hmm. the child dies this morning, and you're left with your conjectures. Um, and I've said repeatedly that some folks, some brothers and sisters of ours, have murdered sleep, so they can sleep no more. Um, those who underestimate the resolve and the fierceness of the obedience do that at their own peril. Clearly so, because um, for so long we live in a country that has left the issues that pertains the well-being of the people unaddressed. For so long, we have left the fundamental issues of democracy and, and, and civil society unaddressed. For so long, leadership has been about me, myself, and I. And so, uh, the sweltering hammer of this content, you know, snowballed first into the NSAS protestation, mm. and then the emergence of the obedient movement. The obedient movement, as it were, and that's what those who are orchestrating all this do not understand, is beyond partisanship, you know. Now, that's why it's difficult for them, as they orchestrate the troubles in the Labour Party, they fail to understand that there is an army of intellectuals, an army of thinkers, an army of those who truly believe that we can have a new nation, you know, an army of those who believe that a new Nigeria is possible, an army of those who believe that we must take back our country for good. So when they orchestrate, look at where it started from, with Julius Abure particularly. Yes, we agree that he may have made some mistakes, particularly at the level of his home state. Believe me, Edo State is the number one obedient state in Nigeria. And the people feel offended that they couldn't deliver certain, they couldn't win certain positions, and they blamed it on him. And for that reason, there was turmoil at home. Some people purportedly suspended him and all that. But that has been handled by the party. No, but now, the, the major issue with him is not just, you know, I'm not coming delivering. To that. It, I'm, it's also about the allegation of fraud. No, I'm yeah. coming to that. I'm coming to Forgery. that, Steve. I'm coming to that, Steve. Now, fundamentally, and that's, you're going to see the way I will take that. 
because oftentimes if you've been involved in partisan politics which of course i know you've been at some point uh you find out that what you call forgery and fraud at this point is, is a bit uh like calling the child a bad name so you can spank the child badly you know parties substitute candidates parties get affidavits court orders court injunctions sometimes in chambers and that's not forgery all the parties do that and that's not forgery the fact that the labor party leadership has not been able to put that effectively before the public is a failure of the spokesperson of the labor party per se i speak for the big ten the yeah. bdt uh, independent campaign group so the fact that they've not been able to put that properly in the public view is a failure of the spokespersons those who are saying and the court will you the court will come out with it yeah parties all over the world parties in this because even in our, const our, our constitution and in the electoral act the ticket is a, belongs to the party that's right so they conduct primaries the field candidates so when at a certain point the party agrees along with the candidates to substitute candidates they go about it several ways and one of them is uh, the APC does that, the PDP does that, to come up today to say that, oh, for certain reasons, uh, you're accusing Julius Abure and his uh, executives of forgery. That's, uh, that's a bit preposterous. Okay. But let me say here clearly that, like I noted, the witch cried last night, the oh. child dies this morning. All that you see today in the Labour Party is about a fear of a certain political party, and those who hold a mandate that is not truly theirs, I'm minding my words, <laughs> those who uh, purportedly won an election but cannot celebrate, those who after an election are still campaigning, those who are doctoring phone calls and faking information because they want to end some mileage against a candidate who as it were won the election and that's why we're in court you asked us to go to court we're in court why not just allow the legal process why not ju just allow the judiciary why are you trying to um twist the labor party that's, that's why are you trying to um, twist you, the obedient movement that's what they're asking why are you, you trying, to do well can i can, you know. can i just uh, come in here because i mean you have obviously highlighted this uh, allegation which is you know what rings true in all of this mm -hmm. and you know the the national legal advisor has come out to say that these uh, documents Giving uh, the, the the backing of the regi uh, the, you know, the registrar and you know commissioner of oath seal that those were the two uh, particular uh, things that they were able to use that to that they're going to use to identify the fact that those documents we're were forged. allegedly forged. Mm -hmm. However, we're looking at a case where there has been an injunction saying that okay, in the meantime, while we resolve this, let the chairman of this party step aside so that this can be resolved. And I know that this was this you know this particular injunction was given at the High Court, even though mm -hmm. there is another one that has been gotten you know by um, you know from the uh, Aburi faction. Yeah. But why are we seeing why instead of going to get this other injunction, why not focus on clearing your name or I mean clearing clearing the, the National Party chairman's name? A proper investigation being done, just so that there isn't this back and forth between, you know, I'll say both factions within the party. You know, let me say clearly that there is no Aburi faction and there's no Apapa faction. It's, um, like I said, the same people who are orchestrating the troubles are the ones fueling it. Um, as I talk to you, at the worst, there's an, a deputy chairman of the party. Yeah. So how can you just from nowhere leapfrog that deputy chairman if, for any reason, the court, the party says, okay, we're going to obey the court order as against the other court order that says we were, were still in, in office. Mm. If the party wants to do that, there is a deputy chairman who should take over pending like the PDP did. It's just about a desperation of sorts. It's about... Of people who think is that Papa not the deputy chairman? Deputy at what level? You know the point is, Abu is in South. Yes. A Papa is in South. Mm -hmm. The deputy subtractive deputy chairman is the one from the North.
You know, this whole thing is an orchestration. Look at the man they suspended, the former publicity secretary coming back on board. Arabali. Yes. Then look at the youth leader that they suspended coming back on board. It's an orchestration of um, trouble that a certain party intends to benefit from. But it won't work. That's exactly you, you, what we're saying. You think that there's an infiltration and that, it's a, you know, from... from from they outside. It. They are doing it to the PDP, they are doing it to the Labour Party because we are in court against them. And you see, let me make this very clearly uh, known, that the issues are beyond these politics and these uh, diatribes. The issues are fundamentally clear. On the 25th of February 2023, Nigerians voted for a candidate and they know, those, they, they know the candidate they voted for. That is why there is some kind of melancholy some kind of uneasy calm, some kind of clearly what you call the piece of a graveyard. The man who they declared winner in the wee hours of the 1st of March, <laughs> we don't even know where he is. Then what makes it much more curious is that they have found it impossible, almost impossible to celebrate their victory. Now, what they're doing is junketing the world trying to get lobbyists to make nations congratulate them. Where does that happen? Democracy is a government of the people, for the people and by the people. If you win the people, they will celebrate your victory. If you didn't win the people, that's why we're where we are. But I tell you, and I want to say this clearly, uh, Nigerians are listening to me, Labour Party is lucky to have a monstrous, fierce and passionate movement like they have a defense that is watertight, called the obedient movement. Most of us are not members of the Labour Party, but we're defenders of the mandate of Peter Gregory Ovi. And we're fierce, we're intellectually sagacious. I, we're I, good I, at the I, internet, Chris, we're you, good I, Chris, at are you, are you not bothered yeah. that you may be, the movement may be losing uh, a few key people uh, who probably believed in the candidacy of, of of your candidate, but then they feel that, one, he has lost the election, but he has gone to court. Let's wait and see what the courts will decide. And two, they feel that the style of the obedience, especially online, on Twitter especially, uh, is not just, you know, it's not civil, it's not mm. decent enough. Interesting. Are you worried that somebody like Professor Wally Shrenka who, by his own confession, you know, had a thing going for Peter B and declared, you know, publicly that he didn't want, you know, uh, 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 either of the two candidates, Ashwaj Bola Ahmed Inubu, who has been declared the winner, and Natiku, because of the age bracket and the class, political class that they belong to. But then he's saying that because Ubi is not able to uh, call his guys to order, you know, people might, people might be disappointed in you. Steve, let me say this. You know, there's something about the universe that's absolutely exciting and interesting. The first time we really had a debate on this, it was with you yeah. on air. I remember I used the word that the obedience are not unruly. They may be fierce, but not rude. Yeah. And interestingly, we're back on it. Um, beautifully, let me say, that if in this contestation, the entire political process, if there is any movement that has been very civil, it's the obedient movement, and I'll tell you why. We have not deployed ethnicity or religion in our debate and contestation. Those who tend to, or who are struggling effusively to brand us as unruly are the ones who have threatened a particular ethnicity. They are the ones who do ethnic profiling. They are the ones who have divided and polarized our country. We are absolutely civil. And I tell you, um, when I saw that interview by my boy and mentor, and I say this with all sense of respect, I tell people that I may disagree with you on certain uh, score, but it doesn't change what I feel about you. Um, I listened to that interview by the great Nobel laureate, Professor Wallace Inka, and I wept for three reasons, and I'm going to put it out before Nigerians. My boy and mentor left issues about ethnic profiling, the killing of people and voter suppression in Lagos, and dwelt chiefly on Dati's comment about those who are interested in swearing a man whose mandate perhaps 
and the declaration of his, of his election, his victory, does not tally with the provisions of our law as a problem. I felt very deeply offended. Then the second one, instead of talking about how those who were declared winners have not stopped the ethnic profiling, he dealt, he called uh, Dati and his statements a fascist. I felt very strange about it. Then I asked, is the man dead? Because he wrote a book long time ago, the man died in him. Who keeps quiet in times of moral crisis? I asked that question. And I'm asking that question again with all sense of humility. Let me tell you, in 2014-2015, I was a DG Change Ambassadors of Nigeria, one of the campaign arms of President Muhammad Buhari. In 2014-2015, the APC, which is presently in power, said worse things than Dati has said. Indeed, my boy, my very senior colleague and the substantive vice president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria today, said that the APC was going to form a, form a parallel government if the PDP were to be declared winners. Some others went as far as saying that it clearly not like that democracy will die should the PDP be declared winners. And I wonder why we have all forgotten all that. And clearly we have the worst electoral larceny in our country's history. Clearly we have the worst electoral fraud in our country's history. Do you know what happened on the 25th of February and what happened on the 18th of March? Beatified Iwu's 2007 elections. That was an election that Yadwa openly admitted that was largely flawed. But that election comes to excellence when you just oppose it with what happened on the February 25th and March the 18th. So why won't you, you beat a child and you refuse us the right to cry? You have asked us to go to court and we've gone to court and you're uneasy? <coughs> what do they want? They're saying don't heat up the polity. Mm. They are saying uh, moderate what you say. And they are saying that wait for the courts to decide, which perhaps is the reason why uh, Professor Willy Shrinker has requested for a debate uh, with Dati Babamed. 2014, 2015, they didn't, wait for, they didn't wait for the election before they started threatening. Do you think that the, 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 the running mate to the candidate, Dati Ahmed, will take out that offer from Professor Willy Shrinker? Oh, yes. The least, the least, he will, and effectively so. The least of the obedience can take up that de debate and do profoundly. And I, I know Professor Wolesinka, I know his, his mind. I know he won't go for that debate because the point is, history is replete with facts and figures. Do you know, with all sense of respect, some of us see him as our mentor because he understands the fact that disobedience of an unjust law is indeed the greatest respect for the law. And in 1965 or so, with a gun, he invaded a radio station and refused the announcement of Akintola at the winner of an election. History is such a beautiful spectacle. And I think that I implore my boy and uh, the esteemed laureate to understand. Man, a young man then. And so oblige the young people who are saying that on the mandate given to Peter Gregory Obi by the Nigerian people, they stand. Look. Look, let me say this clearly. If you notice, Steve, a few weeks ago, about five, six days ago, about uh, seven, eight days ago, you suddenly noticed the resurgence of militancy and banditry across our country. It was in Bayasa, it was in Kasina, Kaduna, uh, Zamfara, and Zamfara. several places, and Kogi. Now, you wonder, was, was it the election that kept it down? The simple thing was that the Labour Party presented the greatest merchant of hope in our history after Abiola. The Labour Party presented the greatest merchant of hope in Africa after Mandela. So Nigerians were waiting at their different positions to see what happens if this hope can transform their lot and their lives. When those who are professionals in electoral larceny and malfeasance took the mandate, albeit it's a hot coal, they can't close their hands because we're going to take it back in the courts. 
when they realize it, they are becoming restive again. And I challenge the DSS on my Twitter handle to go find out truly why there's a sudden resurgence of conflict, banditry, and violence. It's simply about the holy book says, a hope defers makes the heart weary. That's what's happening. Nigerians are getting frustrated and tired. Nigerians are getting angrier by the day because their hope that their lot and their lives will be better with Peter Gregory will be, is almost being uh, thrown in the winds. But God on the throne, that God that rules the human pilgrimage, that brought our boisterous planet out of primal before, out of nothing, is with us. And he knows truly that this country will move forward if the man who truly won the election and got their mandate in, 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 in the court, I, mean, I know Shaitan <laughs> you know, was coming. Just, just yeah, one, okay. just to you know, on on the on the heel of that, if the courts uh, affirm uh, the victory of Ashwaj Bolambe Tinubu of APC, will Peter be call his people to order? The people are not unruly. If the courts rule otherwise, definitely Peter will be the law. But you saw the campaigns now. The most civil of the candidates was Peter Gregory will be. Come on, let's give him that that benefit of the doubt. He was the only one who didn't raise issues about ethnicity. They tried to use the videotape to bring him to religion. They found out that it was fake and forged. Peter is civil. Peter is loving. Peter has compassion. Peter cares about our country. So if he loses at the cost, which Steve, I believe, the facts are preponderant. I believe. That was why Dati sounded the way he sounded. Was sure, rock solid, that even the devil will give judgment. My mentor, Man Mangandi, once said that it comes to a point in history where even the devil stands up and says, for once, let me do right. Our mandate will be that position where the judges of the Supreme Court of the Federal Republic of Nigeria will say, on all scores, what we had on the 25th of February 2023 was monumentally flawed. And they will do justice and give the mandate to the man who truly won it. The man who came third? Oh, you know what happened? He didn't come third. You saw the figures. You know what happened. You saw the figures. Go to INEC IREV and see the real score of real estate, for instance. You saw what happened. In a local government where the most populous local government in River State, where he got about 71,000 votes. At the end of the day, they allocated only 14,000 to him. The facts are there. Mutilated papers everywhere. Tipexed, cancelled out. Oh, we've never had it this bad. And I think that every day Professor Mahmoud Yaqub wakes up, his conscience will give him a slap. He will have a prick. Every day, those who are marketing this electoral larceny wake up. They know the truth, you know, and I think that our country will come out of this dark tone better and stronger because this is about God's greatest country in the world. And I'm passionately, that's why my movement is country first movement. I'm passionate about the fact that uh, tomorrow is going to be better than today. And I'm also confident that the Supreme Court will do justice and Nigerians will get the man they voted for as president. Well, we can only wait until the, those uh, results come out. But just to circle back, because we don't have that much time, to uh, the earlier issues now, just talking about what's going on within the party. What is the modus operandi for resolving the current issue uh, regarding the National Party chairman? And how, how, is, how is it going to be resolved? What's the way forward for the party? Interestingly, like I said, there's a backline that is monstrous and strong. And it's like a buffer for the Labour Party were talking with all the interests and they understand the fact that beyond personal interests, the larger interests should be of primacy. So uh, before Tuesday, Wednesday, you'll find out that the Labour Party will resolve the contradictions and the problems. The court, there's another court order that says, oh, uh, Aburi and Co are still in office. Let me say here that um, the truth is that the hand of Esau will not truly become Jacob. The truth is that Isaac will be king. The truth is that everything that the Nigerian people have wished for this period will come true. Because it was Russell Lowell who said, falsehood forever on the throne, truth 
forever on the scaffold. That same truth sways the future. For behind the dim unknown standard God, keeping watch over his own. There's a God over Nigeria, and that is God involved in the affairs of man. We're going to have a new Nigeria so pretended by Peter Gregory. And I promise you, you'll see it happen, <laughs> and you'll call me. All right. Yeah, but, but, but do you think that the party, Labour Party, I know that you are not the spokesperson for Labour, but of course you know what is going there. Yeah. Do you think that the, the, the party, after all this, will return to normal, given the, the level of demonization that has been um, um, done to uh, Lamidi, uh, Apapa, at the moment? I mean, he's a deputy president, uh, chairman in your party. He'll wake up. He'll wake but up I to the see reality. the way that no, he's been pummeled no, on the Twitter. Passion. No, the passion. Excuse the passion. I know. And we're talking with everybody. Yeah. Excuse the passion. Uh, because the point is, like I said, the witch cried last night, the child dies this morning. The obedience and everybody is believing that, oh, why would you allow those who stole our mandate use you? But... Behind the scene, we're talking to everybody. You think he's being used? Mm. Oh, yes. Behind the scene, we're talking to everybody. And sooner rather than later, we'll resolve the contradictions. And let me say this. Um, the tenure of uh, the incumbent chairman will soon expire. Mm. So that's one of the arguments that we're making. Okay, just allow him until June. Let's unite and exhaust the privileges open to the Nigerian people in the pursuit of our mandate, which is the judiciary. Let's unite as a team. Let me dear Papa will understand that. Every interest will understand. I will get back to the table and resolve the contradictions within. Let me say this, Steve, that we understand that Nigeria is greater than any individual interest. And we shall, God on the side of the Nigerian people and the Labour Party, as well as the obedient movement, resolve the, all those contradictions for good. Like I said, we're in court, we will win in court, and Nigerians will get they are true mandate holder as president. Yeah, how real, it's how real. Confident. Yeah, it's he's, very, he's very confident me. with that. Is there thing. something that <laughs> you, know, you know that's I'm a lawyer. lawyer. <laughs> I'm a lawyer. And that's exactly where, when Dati Baba Ahmed made his arguments, well, though not as a lawyer, uh, I smiled. Let me tell you this. There's a provision of a law that talks about to Ted of the states, and Abuja, my boy here is a very good student of English, even in English language. In that context, conjunctively, you don't turn Abuja, you quote section uh, 239 or so, and then say, oh, that Abuja has been in several judgments referred, taken as one of the states. No, it doesn't make any sense. Because Abuja does not have three senators. Abuja has one senator. Abuja has only six LGAs. Abuja does not have a governor. Abuja is distinct politically. And then what you're talking about is the landlord of Abuja not having to tell the man who drafted, the draftsman of the constitution has something very clear in their minds. That they want a man who is popular in Abuja to superintend over Nigeria from Abuja. You don't want to tell of the state where you're going to reside as president and people think it's something you throw away. The opinion of the draftsman when they said you went to Ted of the states is so that the president will be popular in the country. That's the opinion of the draftsman. And that's opinion extends to Abuja. So the president will be comfortable, will be popular in the state where he resides. In the, and Abuja is the place where he resides. So how can you say that the president who did not win to Ted of Abuja can be the president of the Federal Republic. No, it's not true. Yeah, That's been, what Dati was arguing. But there have been presidents who didn't win to third of Abuja. No, none. Name one. None. The That's the beautiful the, thing The sitting here. president. Who? The sitting president. The sitting president won to third of Abuja. Go through records. In 2019? Yes, he won, to third of Abuja. he won to third of Abuja. You sure about that? I'm very concretely sure. The only person who has not won to third of Abuja is Bola Ahmed Tinubu. And that's the truth. So what am I trying to say? We understand the law, we know the law, and those who, who will interpret the law at the level of the Supreme Court understands why the draftsman said, they could have just said, to Ted of the states of the Federation. You know, Abuja is the melting point. Abuja is where the president will reside, and so you must win. 
two thirds of that place. You know, that's simple argument. But but let me say clearly here that you even have issues about the the trending issue about the DEA, drug issues and all that. You have several issues. But I am not the court of law that will decide. But as a lawyer, I know that our case is watertight. Mm. And I know that the God who leads to human pilgrimage will give us victory. All right. Thank you so much for Thank being you. on here, Chris. <laughs> Wakobia Convener, Country First Movement and spokesperson Obidati Presidential Campaign Organization.